I swear, every time I see NASA start doing something for the first time, I'm thinking they've done this several times before. And with this event, it's probably no different. NASA launches new mission, crash into asteroid, defend planet Earth. The double asteroid redirection test spacecraft launched on Wednesday could be the first to alter an asteroid's path, a technique that may be used to defend the planet in the future. So this is a spacecraft that has been lifted by a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The craft itself is a little over 1200 pounds or 550 kilos. It has a 10 month journey before it reaches a binary asteroid system. Tell me if you heard that one before. The name of the system is Didymos. The larger body is around 780 meters and the smaller is around 160 meters. And once the craft reaches this binary system, it will fling itself into and make impact with Dimorphos, its orbiting moonlet, traveling at a speed of 15,000 miles per hour. Now you are probably thinking to yourself, um, that's stupid. And you are 100% correct, my friend. It is stupid. So why are they doing this? Because they think you're stupid. So we are going to take a bit of a closer look at this because there is a reason. There is an agenda here, a plan, an objective. It is in the name of the craft. It's called redirection. DART is expected to arrive at Didymos either in late September or early spring of 2022. The collision will be guided by an onboard camera and autonomous navigation system. It will also take snapshots right up until the moment of impact and then send those images back to Earth in real time. This camera system is called Draco. No, I didn't make that up. Now, before we get into the details of this, I want you guys to understand something. Every time they do something like this, it is because they want you guys to think that it is their first time. In other words, they want you to think that they are further behind than what they actually are. Meaning, when they shoot spacecraft out and crash it into an asteroid, just to collect data so they can start to figure out how to deflect asteroids, they want you to think that they are not advanced enough yet to do it. They want you to think they are just starting out. And it's going to take until late next year to get that data back making you believe it's going to be a very long time before they can accomplish that task. Not too long ago, I put up a presentation about the Roman Bacchus, or Greek Dionysus, the god of the grape harvest, winemaking, fertility, orchards and fruit, vegetation and sanity, ritual madness, religious and sexual ecstasy, festivity and theater, and how this God is used as a 
mascot for the few filthy perverted rich and evil. Didymos means twin, double, or twin brother in Greek. Dimorphos means having two forms. The first form is before impact, and the second comes a few years later, after impact, to measure the effects of the impact. This will be seen by the Hera space missions. Now, you can connect the name Didymos to Dionysus, and what this boils down to is that the constant use of these Greek names, Apollo, Artemis, Didymos, it's very cult of Dionysus, which goes all the way back to Egypt. Oh, big surprise. Think about it. I could tell you what happened, and it will sound like Greek mythology. Listen to this. The falcon shot a dart into the heavens guided by Draco. It landed on Dimorphos, and Dimorphos... Its larger twin, Didymos, had gone astray from the earth before Hera. Do you see? I mean, what kind of craziness is NASA talking about? You see, what's going to happen now is people are now going to start thinking, oh, well, they don't yet have the ability to do anything about these incoming asteroids. This does a couple of things. First, it gives reason for collecting more funding for defense. In other words, it's a way to get more money. Two, it causes people to build a greater demand for better defense. So if you pay me to stand outside your home and guard it for you to make sure that nothing bad gets to you, See, what they do is they stand outside your house guarding it with a knife. While in the van parked across the street, they have a whole arsenal of weaponry. Some things you didn't even know were possible to exist. So when something does get through, now pay attention because this is important. When something does get through, people are going to beg them to resolve this. And that is when they may break out the big boy toys, who knows, but only for a price. And usually, folks, that translates into costing you freedom. You all see what they are asking of you in exchange to fight a virus, right? What do you think they are going to ask of you to fight asteroids? Use your imagination. As the months go by, it seems as if we are getting closer and closer to an event. And when they tell you that they are going to launch a first attempt to deflect an asteroid, why tell you months ahead of the craft's arrival? It has to make it there first. There are several obstacles that this craft may encounter along its journey to Didymos. They have no idea if it's going to succeed or fail. So why hype it up and tell us about it? months before any data can get back to us. There is a reason they are putting this out there in the air. Now, what is Hera? Or who is Hera? Hera, named after the Greek goddess of marriage, will be, along with NASA's DART spacecraft, humankind's first probe to rendezvous with a binary asteroid system. A little understood class making up around 15% of all known asteroids. Due to launch in 2024, Hera would travel to a binary asteroid system, the Didymos pair of near-Earth asteroids. The 780 meter diameter mountain-sized main body is orbited by a 160 meter moon, formerly christened Dimorphos in June 2020 about the same size as the Great Pyramid of Giza. This smaller body is Hera's focus. The spacecraft would perform high-resolution visual, laser, and radio science mapping of the moon, which will be the smallest asteroid visited so far, to build detailed maps of its surface and interior structure. By the time Hera reaches Didymos in 2026, 
Dimorphos will have achieved historic significance. The first object in the solar system to have its orbit shifted by human effort in a measurable way. Folks, when I keep showing you Greek God after Greek God that is associated with NASA, is this some type of cult? More than just a science institution, which is now part of a planetary defense system. And look, I'm just putting this out there. If you want to go far and beyond with this, then their last card is probably alien. All the UFO talk and all this asteroid talk, this is coming in the future. But something's got to happen first. They need an event. And once asteroids become an active threat, they'll start hinting at aliens on their way. It's like they are building a stage. So now here's the funny part. Are you ready, folks? You can't see any of it. You can't see it. You can't see Didymos and Dimorphos. You can't see the spacecraft land. You can't see any of these objects, can you? All you ever get is 3D modeling and artist renditions. It could be fake. I'm not saying it's all fake. The point is, once that rocket leaves your sight, only they know what's going on. And they have to tell you what's going on. Nothing could be going on after that rocket leaves your sight. Or maybe they are going to smash this craft into that asteroid. Maybe it's just another one of their weird rituals. Let's see what the witchcraft logo of the day is. The dart logo. Let's see. Oh, it's a spaceship aimed at a smaller asteroid or is it a dart pointing at a circle or is it a arrow pointing inward toward a crescent moon which generally symbolizes fertility the inward arrow could mean the divine masculine and feminine coming together they do call the target object a moon right you guys think I keep finding the connections to these symbols by accident? No. They do this on purpose. Why? I don't know. How many of you are artists out there? Tell me, how often are you considering magic symbols to incorporate into your designs and work unless you do it intentionally? Thank you. I'm telling you, there is something that is being overlooked here. And I believe that has something to do with the actual launches of these craft. Remember, aside from what may be up there orbiting the Earth, beyond that, people are in observance of these launches. There is more to come, more to launch. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. You can follow me on Instagram at jwoodward. And until next time, friends... Learn to see straight through what they present to you. And as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.